Hello, everybody. Welcome to RDA Tech Q and A. You've got questions. We've got guesses. Um, we uh, do news on tech, and if you have tech issues or tech questions or just something technically related, or I don't know, um, send the, your your questions to requests at radiodeadair.com. We will endeavor to see if we can help you with those things. I'd like to say, you know, the old blind, you know, we don't do Windows, but Windows is primarily yeah, we, what we, we do. Yeah, we, though we do I, a lot of Windows. Yeah, I, we could probably say we don't do Unix, but that doesn't have the same sort of tagline. No, it doesn't. Effect, you know? no. no, it's not it's quite the same. Um, we I, don't wear fedoras. No, yeah, the, there, there is that. I'm Nash. I've done... I do RDA. In addition to that, I've done technical related stuff for well over a decade plus. Uh, with me, as always, my producer, Mike Gearman, a similar background in tech related stuff. We'll be getting to your questions shortly, but first, we've got uh, two, we've got some news stories to go over this week. Um, let's start with the big one. A lot of ramifications coming from this one. Um, this this is yeah. Uh, this well, is that could be either of them actually. Well, let's start with with the one with the money. Um, that could be either of them actually. <laughs> this week, Twitter, after a failed IPO or, or not failed a failed buyout, um, Twitter well, failed attempt to sell themselves. Yeah, failed attempt to sell themselves. It's, uh, it's, it's I, I, I don't know, what's the word for uh, botched prostitution? Uh, anyway. The, the, the continuing story of a social media platform that has gone to the races. Yeah, Twitter has cut 9% of its staff and just, th this all happened uh, during their quarterly report. They also decided to discontinue Vine. Now, some of you may be going... I thought that was one of their better products. Some of you may be saying, what the fuck is Vine? Well, you know those little six second videos you've been seeing across social media since about, oh, 2012? That's Vine. And it's gone now. Or it's slow, it's, it's, they're shutting it down and you have now to get your shit off of there and go away. Feels a whole lot like when blipped. What? You, what the fuck do you want? I want a meat stick human. He already got one when I got home. You're not getting another one. You had your meat stick for... No! No! I'm trying to do this, the show this, here. This is this is typical for cats. It's, this is your really your first cat, right? Yes. Okay, so this is typical, typical for cats when you go away for any length of time longer than a day. A day they may not notice. Uh. More than that, they go, where have you been? And they let you know. The only cat we ever had growing up that didn't do this was our Siamese Lenny, because Lenny never talked about anything. He was the quietest. Si he would protest if you picked it. If you hurt him, he might yipe a little bit, you know, cat yipe. Um, but nothing other than that. His brother, on the other hand, was more vocal than great. Uh, well, he, more than made up for it. Hopefully he will just go fuck off for a bit so we can do this. So yeah, ahead of the quarterly reports, Twitter is cutting its staff by 9%. That's pretty big for any tech company. I think so, Well, but uh, I'm looking at this article, I don't see, maybe it's another article somewhere. I don't see where that translates into a raw number. Cause you know, um, you, you said- Well, it's in the article, it's about 350 employees. Okay, it is? Okay, good. Okay, yeah. I just must have missed it. Because that's what I was looking for was the raw number. Because you look at some companies that go, we're cutting 9%. Well, that could be nine people. Well, with Twitter, they have about 4,000 employees, and okay. they're losing 350 of them. Um, Disney, Google, and Salesforce were all interested in purchasing Twitter. And at least theoretically. At, at least, least you know, we yeah. know in theory because Salesforce said they were. The others never said. Well, and, and um, it's been reported in places like Forbes and other places that one of the main reasons they backed off was because Twitter's got some abuse problems. It, it, it's not fair, I think, to call them Twitter trolls anymore. No. Because 
there, and I say this as someone who has trolled forums, mm. there, there can be an art form to trolling. You can get a lot of kudos for a well-built, well-crafted troll. <laughs> what Twitter has is a shithead problem. <laughs> I don't know if you have to beep this out in post-production. No, this is shitheads. They, they literally have a shithead problem. People who go, I don't really like this thing. I was never going to see it because I don't like it. But I must abuse everyone involved with it because I wasn't planning on watching it. Well, it's not just that sort of stuff. There's also the There's also blatant the racist. racist. Oh, God. The white fucking supremacists everywhere. Everywhere. Um, and in addition to that, there's other lesser problems like the ease of sock puppeting and yeah. the fact that there are bots everywhere, yeah. every fucking where. Even Facebook has gotten a better handle on bots. Not, not the best. I still get, I still get friend requests from a bot about once a month. And I still see on, on RDA, we still get people who try to join the, the channel, the Facebook group, who are bots. But not nearly as many as we used to. But the, also in addition to that, um, I've noticed there's even bots I've got that will retweet stuff I've said. And the, the name of the bot is, buy, follower, buy 1,000 followers for $10 or something like that. That's another problem Twitter has. And that all ties into why Twitter's not tackling some of this. Have you been watching uh, Silicon Valley? No, I didn't get I watched the first episode and it's just like it didn't click for me. Maybe I should try again. Well, one of the uh, plot points is uh, the developers in the show are keeping their product afloat by means of paying a sock puppet farm in India, which is essentially it's a it's a great big room, a warehouse full of people who get paid to log in and do stuff every day. And get paid to, to hype the product. Right. Well, no, not, not, not even to hype the product. They just get paid to use it to look like an active user. Ah, but the, of course that does hype the product saying, hey, we've got this much user base. Yeah, that, that, that's, and that's, that's a big it, issue. It, it, it's, it's, it's better than, I don't know, selling cocaine to ma maintain your car company. Yes. Actually, I think I, I'd respect the selling cocaine more. Okay, it's more legal than... <laughs> that is, it's not that Twitter's hiring people to do this, but it's that it's sort of... It's that people are using Twitter as their platform to do that. Right. People are using Twitter as a platform, it has all of these accounts that aren't actually people. They're just easily created, non-verified accounts that, that you can make, I think, with an email address is all you need. So you have all these non-verified accounts that are running rampant across, and it inflates Twitter's overall numbers. So Twitter has no real upside for them to actually deal with that problem head on. It actually makes... If they were to go in, and they could do this, they have the ability to do this because there are tons of tools online that can really quickly weed out how many of your followers are bots. If Twitter would just simply go through and eliminate those bots, their user numbers would drop off. Even though a lot of those users aren't real, they can still... In their valuation, it makes, it, makes, it, yeah, it, makes the, it makes the company look like there's less uh, right. market share, less spread, whatever. Well, shh. No. No. The problem is they've dug themselves this hole. There has been, there were a couple, I think it was either, it was Vanity Fair, I believe, did, it, did this article, but there, there was an article done that expressed, um, from some Twitter people who work at Twitter and people who used to work at Twitter, that the higher ups, the executives, have this weird tech bro philosophy of unlimited free speech. Whatever that may mean. Yeah, whatever that free speech, whatever that may mean, that does not want to crack down on 
what others, what most people perceive as abuse and harassment because they want to have this platform wherever. Same same sort of mentality that drove Reddit and still drives Reddit quite a bit. And in its own way, same kind of mentality that drives 4chan. Twitter has just been better at, you know, not having it be such a big issue, but it's grown and grown and grown and it can't be ignored anymore. Yeah, I'm seeing estimates that it's up, uh, up close to 10% of their user base is actually bots. Right. So, so they would have to cut their active user numbers by 10% on their valuation. Now, the, the irony here is, were they to actually clean up the abuse and harassment, deal with it's sock puppets, they would probably get more users who would be willing to go to the platform. But a lot of people have left the platform mainly because they get fucking chased off of it. Um, the, the, is it the writer or Mockingbird just got chased off of Twitter? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it wasn't so much. It, she, she did clarify this on her own page. It wasn't so much. She felt she was chased off. She just felt like, what's the point of dealing with this bullshit? Fair enough. And, it, and she has a very valid point. Why, why should she have to deal with that kind of abuse? Yeah. Well, it's not, it wasn't even just the abuse. It was just like, this is bullshit. There are no grown-ups here minding the store. This isn't useful or fun for me. Bye. Which even a lot of the people who aren't seriously harassed or abused also are getting that problem. There's no one minding the store. I don't feel comfortable here. This isn't fun for me. Bye. Why should I stay? Right. And... Had Twitter, part of the reason cited by Salesforce and Disney, I don't know about Google, but Salesforce and Disney both cited the fact that Twitter was not dealing, that Twitter had this toxic reputation for harassment as reasons they backed off the buyout. Yeah. And I don't know that I want, wanted Disney to say buy Twitter, but I guarantee you if they did, they would have cleaned it up. Well, that because that's one thing Disney doesn't want is a reputation for that sort of thing. Well, Disney that, Disney didn't want to have to clean it up. No yeah, one yeah. no one wants to to look at this company and go, "Okay, I've got this liability that I have to deal with before I to to with the company already comes with it." I don't want that. I don't want to have to deal with whatever fallout from all this harassment. I don't want that. Deal with it your own damn self and they moved on to something else. Even Google Another problem with this, and this is what, what's rumored, another issue that with these buyouts was Twitter has this ridiculously high valuation. I think it's $25 billion, $20 billion, something around that. I'll take your word for that while Ve I look it up. Very high market cap of something along the lines of, of $20 billion. Uh, I'm seeing 12.5 12 12.5? Right okay. Well, it's still 12.5. And... Yeah. That was another thing that people were looking at those user numbers and realistically using other, looking at those user numbers. And Twitter was asking somewhere around $12.5 billion. They didn't want to buy it for $12.5 billion. They, they didn't want that. Maybe if Twitter had been willing to take a haircut to sell out, someone would have bought it. But $12.5 yeah. billion, they're expecting too much to come from this. In terms of getting bought out, I think Twitter missed its window. Yeah, if they'd tried this a year ago, they probably would have been... So Not a year ago, but three years ago. Okay. It had, had, you know, had they, when they noticed Google was working on, on Google+, Plus, had they made themselves available to be purchased around then... Google would have probably snapped them up and incorporated that into Google Plus. Yeah. And it actually might And maybe have. killed it off eventually. Maybe. <laughs> well, no, it actually might have taken off. If it had Twitter's user base coming over to it, it actually might have had room to expand. Yeah. Because if you had Twitter as part of Google Plus... And suddenly the character limit's not quite as you know well, there anymore. No, I'm saying Twitter attached to Google Plus, people would have all these other things plus Twitter as part of it. Just sign in, you have Twitter, and then you have all these other things. People might have been more inclined. But 
I, I think I think Twitter missed their way. So what's happening now is Twitter is moving forward on its own. But you they still aren't profitable at this point. They've been running at a loss for a long time. They just lost 9% of their workforce in an effort to show uh, shareholders they're doing their best to minimize costs and grow, at least show some sort of growth, at least profit instead of losses. Um, they are, that's also where vo losing Vine comes in by cutting down Vine, which it's hard to put ads on a six. In fact, the entire monetization scheme of Vine was the Vine stars themselves would make arrangements with um, product placement and whatnot, and that was how they would get money. No ads were placed on there, which is sort of not the most efficient revenue generation setup. Am I boring you? Am I boring no, you, Mike? I, I didn't sleep well last night. Am I boring you there, Mike? Boring you just a little bit? No, I didn't sleep. So, and in, in terms of dealing with the abuse, we already know that if you put, with the Olympics, if you put anything fucking copyright Olympic related on, on Twitter during the Olympics, your ass got knocked the fuck down. Tweets got <laughs> deleted. People got banned. They weren't fucking around with that. So Twitter, I will say that was a relatively simple filter to implement, though. Well, yeah, but I think there are a number of terms you could very easily implement to filter. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's more a case of they were paid or at least threatened with lawsuits by the Olympic people who were quite sue happy. And um, yet, the... And yet, no, one, no one's suing them for providing a platform for racists. Well, regardless of that, they have the tools in place to combat harassment. They have the place in they have the tools in place to combat blatant racism. They're choosing not to make use of them for that purpose. Ergo, this is Twitter's own fault. They have made this bed. They have the ability to do something about it and have chosen not to. So whether Twitter can, you know, exist past this, I don't know. Um, maybe we'll see. I think what they're shooting for is the perception of profitability. They just want to get their numbers up, but they're still not addressing that core issue of abuse and harassment. And I don't know if Twitter can survive in its current form with that mentality or maybe this has happened before. Um, it's it, what's what's it called? Shareholder activism. Have you heard of that term? Uh, yes, that's when shareholders get together and say, "You're going to change this, or we're selling our stocks." We're not just we're selling our stocks. We're going to use our our um, leverage of stock to move for new board members to push people out of their leadership positions in the company. Someone might take that up because they're realizing they don't want their money to fucking vanish. Um, in any event, I do feel bad for the people who were on Vine. It was a lot of fun. And I know a lot of people have built up very large bodies of works on Vine. They had their, uh, platform yanked out from under them with little to no warning. I feel for you. I've been there. In fact, I think just about everybody who has been doing any sort of internet media stuff has been dealing with this inevitably suddenly one day out of the blue, the platform you relied on kaboom. It's it's ugh. so I, I I do feel for the Vine folks, but this is just this is just where we are with Twitter right now. Um, what going forward, what they should do is actually make an effort to contend with the issues that are driving away uh, investors or buyers. Part of it being harassment. Um, but we have to see if they're going to have the if they're if they're actually going to do something about it or they're going to stick with this weird philosophy that is slowly killing them. Yeah, it's crippling the perception of the company. That's not good. Um, 
Let's move on to another issue that in tech that happened this week. Not so much what they announced, but what they didn't announce. Apple had one of their yeah. one of their um Mac it was the Mac event. Okay, that, that's the thing about this. And this is where they were supposed to re- to talk about new Mac products. And they did everything but, but the but desktop. They, yeah. Um they got a new laptop. They have the they new new MacBook mini? Pro with the touch bar. Oh, that, no mini, sorry. Yeah. Um what they what Apple announced was a new MacBook Pro in the 13 and 15 inch and that was pretty much it. There there is no Although I do want to show you something hilarious uh, that I found just earlier today. What's that? Um, when people were were, ta- were talking about the, the new MacBook, um, which only has USB Type C connectors. Okay. Um, what kind of connector does the new? Uh, iPhone have, Mike. It, it, it is not USB Type-C. No, it is not. It's Lightning. So, so you've got to get a Type-C to Lightning converter to plug your phone into your computer. Yeah, uh, someone put... Uh, who? Well, anyway, th- this was at, this came out over the Twitter. Apple, it just works. Although, if you, <laughs> if you, if you take a look at that... Um, and no, it doesn't. No, you can't plug in your headphones at the same time, and you have to plug in your iPhone 7 to the USB Type-C to USB uh, Type-A adapter in your... So you have to bring along just to plug in your own iPhone to your new MacBook Pro. Yeah. But anyway... Um, so what we're at, what we're at right now with, with the, uh, Mac desktop is the last time the iMac was updated was in 2015. Yeah. The last time the Mac mini was updated was in October, 2014. That that one's getting a little long and tooth then. And the last time the Mac pro was updated was December, 2013. And at the time the Mac Pro was released, the cylinder version, the trash can version, at the time it was released, the hardware on the Mac Pro was already a year old. Wow. So now you have the only Mac Pro you can purchase, the only one available. Four-year-old hardware. Four-year-old hardware, but you're still paying the same premium price, which is somewhere around $3,000. That's pretty ridiculous. You can buy a lot of uh, Intel-based hardware for $3,000. And the the irony being, the Mac is Intel-based. So what Mac is expecting you to do is spend the price for brand new, non-obsolete hardware on four-year-old gear. I know, right? It's bullshit. You, you understand, right? This is really frustrating, especially for media professionals who rely on the Mac Pro. When people hear Mac Pro, I, and I got a lot of this on my, on my Facebook, not my Facebook, my Twitter. It was, uh, well, why don't they just use a MacBook Pro? Because it's not quite as capable. It's as- not the same thing. Yeah. It's not the same thing at all. <sighs> no, the the MacBook is the, or the the Mac Pro is well it used to be Apple's premium machine for doing video editing, for doing AutoCAD, for doing um anything that involved heavy multi-threading uh processing for 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 being a workstation for designers, for creators, for coders, for all of the kind of stuff that was demanding that the standard Mac couldn't handle. And yet, it would still run the Mac operating system. 
it would still have access to all those things. It would be the fastest hardware, multi-core CPUs beyond four cores up to six, you know, high-end stuff. And yet, it's been languishing. And what that says to professionals is you cannot trust us to update and maintain this platform. Now, that, that's one of those things that, especially when you talk about Final Cut, you, your only way of running Final Cut, yeah. aside from some crazy Hackintosh setup, which is not supported, out of warranty, and technically illegal, your only way of running Final Cut is on four-year-old hardware. Whereas a brand new 2016 modern platform might not be able to run Final Cut, but it can run Premiere and Avid much faster and render much quicker. And render time, especially when it comes to video, I speak from my own experience, render time is everything. If you're trying to do a, a huge scene with a lot of different effects on it, a lot of different digital work, that takes processing power to render quickly. The ideal is what's called the one-to-one -one ratio. For every uh, one, just an example, for every one minute of, of video, you want it to take one minute to render. That's that's the that that's that's the good you can hope for. You get better. You can render faster than that. You know, for every uh, one minute, it, for every one minute of video, it renders thirty seconds. That'd be nice. Sometimes you can achieve that, especially if you have faster and more powerful hardware. But the more work you do on video, the longer it takes to render, especially if you have lots of effects, lots of three D. Um, green screen, all of these things to add to it, it takes more time to work. It takes more processing power. That's what the Mac Pro exists for. But Apple seems like they are losing interest in making desktop stuff, especially considering um, Microsoft announced their uh, Surface Studio unit this week. Um, great big 27-inch touchscreen monitor that acts like a transformer it folds down has a touchscreen and a pen it doubles as a drawing desk yeah that used to be the kind of thing apple would come up with they're not coming up with that anymore and yeah and also the hardware is all brand new, much faster than anything on a current Macintosh, um, on the Mac, the Mac Mini, the iMac. It's, you know, and a lot of uh, artists I saw online were like going, oh, I want that. I want that. I personally saw it and went, that's going to be obsolete in two weeks. <laughs> What are you clicking? Are you, you clicking a bunch of stuff. I'm looking at, is my frame rate still crap? A little bit, but it's okay. We'll deal with it another okay. time. But Okay. I just saw it out of the corner of my head. I'm like, oh, let's see if I can adjust this during the show. No! Great you, idea. No, don't do that during the show. <laughs> so, but yeah, no, it, it, it is, and I don't get, because they've always wanted to place themselves as having the appearance of being more cutting edge. Why they're not keeping up with these doesn't make a lot of sense. Unless they're kind of letting the Mac die. Which, from a from a um, a business perspective, doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. No, I mean, it, especially considering sales of smartphones have plateaued. Uh, it's it's I I want to think that Apple is just resisting the whole commoditization thing because. PCs have been commoditized for a long time. What? <laughs> what? Do you have something to add? You're not a Mac user. Well, you're not. You're not.
pay attention to him for a second. Sorry about that. No worries. <laughs> it's suddenly Grady. You just yeah. You want belly rub? You want belly rub? Okay, okay, belly rub. <clears throat> Looks like he's about to bite your hand. Most PCs have been commoditized for a long time. Then by that I mean they're they're seen in the same regard as televisions and washing machines and refrigerators. You get you it. Go out and buy one when you need one. You, you get it and you forget it. You know, you, you're not thinking, you don't upgrade your television every single year because there's no real good reason to upgrade your television every single year. You could if you have more money than cents, but you don't do it. And that's starting to happen to phones as well, smartphones. You don't upgrade it every single freaking year. There's no need. I mean, smartphone features have hit this. I mean, they added the barometer to the iPhone 7. A barometer. Uh, I didn't know they added that, and I really don't. The reason I don't see the need for a barometer is because most phones can get an AccuWeather app, which will tell you the same thing. Yep, but they added a barometer. That's what's underneath the uh, the speaker grill. There's only one speaker in it. That's where the uh, the other speaker grill is not a speaker. It's a barometer. Is this also so they can tell if you're messing with them when you say no i didn't drop my phone in the water i don't know why, why the fuck would you need a barometer i don't know I, mean, seriously, I, I i scared him um pre preloading preloading apps including say accuweather or, or some other hmm. weather app because i'm sure there's more than one there are several yeah. okay whatever who needs a barometer in there a compass Compass capability, you know, GPS, no problem. You know, when they added GPS to phones, it was like suddenly that's a feature people need. But the the thing I'm saying is there there is no compelling reason to upgrade year to year anymore. Yeah, there have been no huge breakthroughs, huge changes to how phones do things that have With been. Computers, at least they could they could at least update the hardware with new manufacturing processes though yeah but th that that really has that's kind of plateaued as well so you could upgrade yeah but there, there 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 are incremental upgrades they could make for people especially for the mac pro where it's you know three years old almost you know with oh there are some hardware. big especially considering uh the max amount of ram it could potentially hold it's still limited to 64 gigabytes on the mac pro the newer uh, Intel processors can handle up to 128 gigabytes, and it can also use DDR4. Yeah, those are kind of big deals. Because when Especially you're talking, if you're in that in that in that production type, right? We're talking about rendering video. If you have 128 gigabytes and you're working with tons of effects, that makes a big difference. So we're talking about professional people working on these things who are stuck with capabilities that PCs are outlapping the Macintosh. Yeah. It's, and it's, oh, another thing from Mac, from Apple this week. Um, you remember the whole, uh, it's courageous to lose the, uh, the uh, 3.5 millimeter jack because, hey, we're going to go wireless now. Yeah, they pushed back on uh, the release date on the wireless earbuds yeah. because there's problems. We don't know what the problems are. Apple has not said, "Here's the problem." So it could be it could be the battery life is what they what they'd hoped for. What they you know, initial tests showed, mm -hmm. uh, follow up tests showed, no, it's not quite that good. Uh, it could be uh, there's a problem with them staying in people's ears. If you turn too sharply, they just fly the hell out. I think there it's could probably be a problem with sinking. I think it's probably the staying in the ears. That's my guess. You know, because no, you're... It, it, it could be Bluetooth syncing. It could be, or whatever they're using to sync. Yeah. It could be It could be uh, battery life. It could, be, it could be a combination of all three. And they're going, this was a really great idea until we tested it. Yeah, and that's kind of the thing, because they're saying, we should, we're going wireless now. That's the future of these... Th well, we don't have the future ready for you, so... Uh... It's not it just... Apple is just sort of fumbling around right now. You know, it was the Apple Watch and now the iPhone 7 without the 3.5 jack, and they haven't updated any of the Macs in years. Kind of getting... I'm, I'm, 
I'm wondering what's going on with their with their senior executives. They're going, oh, we've got enough money. We don't need any more. Their their big uh, addition to the MacBook Pro was the Touch Bar, which is only on the 15 inch model. It's not on the 13 inch model. I don't even know what the Touch Bar really. Does. It's a touch screen that replaces the function keys. Uh huh. So based on whatever app you have open on the Macintosh, the function keys will change. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, I don't like that. Yeah, yeah. I no. I had something kind of just like that. I had a Razer keyboard that had a um, touch screen ins instead of a number pad. And it had apps for the keyboard. And do you know what the big bottleneck was there and why they stopped doing it? The damn thing broke? No, no one was developing apps for the touchpad. Uh, no one was fucking with it. It, it, it just, it was this, this neat little, it was supposed to be like every game would have its own specific touchpad thing for it. And it would also have like a Twitter app and everything on this little, this little touch screen bit. And it, 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 it's, it's a number pad. It's... There's only so much landscape you have. What are you going to do? You're playing Warcraft. You've got forward, back, left, right, strafe, left, strafe, right. What are you going to do? Well, the, the, with Warcraft, they had um, not only did it have uh, automatic macros and a different way of setting things up, it would also have your statistics for the fight and everything built into it. But developers just looking at I that... add on in WoW for those things. Yeah, people were, developers were looking at that and going, why would we bother with doing that for every single game? It's not... We're not doing that. So. Yeah. So that stopped, ha and that's I think is going to have with happen with the touch bar because developers are going to look at that and go, no, just just leave the default. It's fine. I, I mean, unless the OS translates stuff and they can just go, this means this, this means this, this means this, and they can do it in ten minutes with no testing, they're not. Yeah, yeah. So, in any event, Apple things are looking. Everyone's going. We miss Steve. We miss Steve. Well, Steve is dead. Yeah. Because Steve thought homeopathy would cure cancer. <laughs> and uh, I say the same thing Dara O'Brien did. Get in the fucking sack. If you don't know that, look up Dara O'Brien's comic bits about homeopathy. <sighs> All right. Well, now we uh, still have some time Now that left. we've offended some Apple fanboys. Yay! <laughs> I'm going to get letters. We still have some time left. Let's get to the questions for this week. Actually, one comment real quick. Oh, God, what? You said you're going to get letters. We should do a show sometime where it's just the best of letters. No. No, I think not. I think How come not. You, me, Tara, reading off the letters? No. <laughs> All right. Uh, if you have, again, if you have questions you'd like us to answer here uh, on Tech Q&A, you can send those to requests at radiodeadair.com. We will endeavor to help you with your tech issues. Um, let's start with one from Christoph here. Uh, it says, hi, Nash and Mike. I have a question for Tech Q&A. What's your opinion on replacing the default software on wireless routers with OpenWRT uh, or other that kind of thing. Uh, is it worth the trouble assuming one can do it and will keep up with the software updates or is it only a waste of time? Thanks in advance uh, for your response and thanks for the great show. I think if, you're, if your router is capable of, of uh, taking OpenWRT, uh, it can be worthwhile. There's a, it can add a lot of features that your router may not natively provide you with its mm -hmm. router app. It can add features and functionality that you want to have control over but your app has decided, or the, the a manufacturer's app has decided, no, we're not going to let you do these things yeah. because we don't want to. The, the, what we're talking about here is when you normally get a router and uh, you're setting it up, it's either you have a, a set of software or you type into your, you go into a browser and you type in the bar 192.168.1.0 or .0.1 or depending on the different model. And it brings up- one something of that nature. Yeah, and it brings up an interface on the screen that's the software that's on your router. And it allows you to change things like you set the name of your network, you set your password, you can set always up... Always set your password. Yeah, always set your password. Do you, not leave it on the default password. You can set up stuff like uh, shutting off the internet at a certain time of day, 
You can set up, set up access controls, lots of different features like that. And you can set wonderful features such as priorities, such as saying this IP address has a lower priority than this IP address because I'm gaming and he's just watching Netflix. <laughs> I'm sorry, have you had problems with your roommates before, Mike? No, none at all. <laughs> whatsoever. Now, the, I'm speaking hypothetically. The the advantage with OpenWRT and I think, what's the other one? Um, tomato. I haven't played with Tomato. Yeah. Um, what these, uh, these do, instead of getting the ones from the manufacturer, it's a replacement. It's like a, a replacement OS for your router. Like you would put a different version of Android on your phone. It's a different uh, operating system for the router. Um, OpenWRT opens up a lot of different options that aren't available. However, one With thing... many options comes many headaches. Yeah, that, that. For one thing, it's not available on every single router. Only a certain types, only certain ones are compatible with it. Yeah, um, basically, they have to have a certain chipset inside the right. router. For a certain subset of available chipsets. And second, like Mike was saying, some of the shit you just might not really need or care. What are you doing? What, Grady, what are you doing up there? Are you seeing this? I saw it. What are you doing up there? I thought he did that all the time, though. Yeah, but I don't, what, what are you doing? You upstaging little shit. We're trying to do a you, show here. You are not paying attention to me, human. <sighs> We're trying to do a show here, you free idiot. I just thought of a great Halloween costume for Grady. What? You. A little Nash outfit, the blue shirt. Let's not. Let's not. I'm not dressing up my cat for Halloween. I'm not doing that. So, fan art people. <sighs> so, anyway. <laughs> um, having all these options may be a good thing if you know what you're doing with them, if you know what you want with them. There are some sorts of things you can do with the OpenWRT, like... You might even be able to set up ad blocking at the router level. Yeah. If you know what you're doing. And if you don't know what you're doing, you can accidentally block Google. Yeah. I mean, it, it it's all dependent on if you know what, if you have a specific thing that OpenWRT can do that your own so software that came with it can't do, yeah, it would probably be worth it. But otherwise, unless you have those specific needs, it's it's really kind of a waste of time. It, it can be a, it can be a good learning experience though. Oh yeah, if you um, want to if you want to yeah, mess yeah, around with a, stuff, if, if you end up with a second set of hardware at some point, you're going, I, I feel like messing around with this, and maybe you throw us, you know, a set. Now, one other thing with OpenWRT, there are some ISPs that aren't particularly friendly towards OpenWRT. Yeah, and will if uh, it's not configured just the way they like it, will block your internet access. So, so that's one thing to consider. <laughs> look at this look at this upstaging little shit behind me. That sort of almost segs into the next question. Yeah, uh this is from Yardania. Uh hello, Nash, Mike, and you little shit, aka Grady. <laughs> yes, I'm talking about you. Would you look at him? <laughs> he's, he's ready for his close-up, Mr. Nash. Anyway. Um, she writes, Recently, I've been having trouble with my Wi-Fi connection. Uh, my connection was extremely slow, less than 100 kilobits, according to Fast.com. So after power cycling my module and no changes, I went into devices, checked my Wi-Fi receiver, updated the drivers, Still moving at a snail's pace. Uninstall and reinstall Chrome and Firefox, clear all the cookies and cache, and then a full system restore, and nothing. Be sure it was on my computer's end. I brought our old laptop and set it in the desk next to mine. It was at the proper speed. Wi-Fi connector is a Qualcomm Athros AR956X. Good drivers list. Uh, I was not sure if they're both supposed to be there or if that's the problem. Laptop's a few years old, but aside from the poor Wi-Fi connection, it's in proper working order. Um, to add to the confusion, I brought it to the store and it seemed to work fine. Loaded a YouTube video on full HD and it's the only device in my house not moving at a proper speed. Uh, the damn thing keeps making a liar out of me. Okay. Okay, well, remember a moment ago when I said 
you can go in the router and adjust people's connection speeds. Yeah. First thing I would do is check there, make sure someone wasn't playing around and, and, and adjusted, you know, limited you. Yeah, it's one of those things. The very fact that you took it to another place and it was working fine. There's nothing wrong with that computer. Yeah, um, it's, the, it's the it's the router. There's an issue going on in your router. I would the first thing I do is I would flash the router back to factory settings. Um, Please, of course, before you do this, take note of any specific settings right? that you want to keep. Right. These paper. Just write it down. Um, now, typically with a, with most routers, the way to set the back to factory settings is you find a paper clip. Um, you look at the back of your router and there should be a little hole. Sometimes it will say reset next to it. In that hole is a button. It's re it's pushed behind that hole so you can't just bump it. Randomly do it. Yeah. yeah. What you have to do is you unfold the paper clip, you stick the paper clip in the hole, you hold it down there with the power connected for, for about five seconds. Five. I normally do it for 30 just to be on the safe side. Yeah. But you hold that button down. And when you release it, it will set the router back to the way it was when you got it out of the box. Um, then now, go but before, but before you do that, though, check to make sure you're not speed filtered somewhere on the yeah. router, because that's check a very that. easy thing to check and fix without re uh, resetting the router. Yeah. But uh, if that doesn't do it, um, go through and reset the router, set it up again, hook it up to, to your modem, make sure everything's working and then see if there's a difference on the laptop. I'm willing to bet there will be simply for the very fact you say you took it to another place, to another wireless network, and it was working okay on another wireless network. That's nothing. The laptop is fine. There's something going on in your router. I need to check one thing. Huh. Um, there was something with uh, various 802.11 specs where a couple of them did not play well with each other. Hmm. And I don't remember which ones it was. So you might also check just to make sure that your uh, receiver on your laptop, say if it's 802.11n, that your modem is 802, if your router is 802.11n or better, you know, AC or AD or whatever the versions are. Um, to make sure it's it's something that's not just you know not misconfigured that way, because when you took it to the other place, they could have what you match up with properly. I'm sorry, I'm just dealing with this little bozo upstaging. Hi, what are you doing? What are you doing? I, I am lim I am limboing under the cord, obviously. What 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 what? All right, hold on a second, Mike. What do you want? We're trying to do the show here, pal. Come on, what do you want? Grady wants next. Are you done? Okay, to good. Uh, sorry about that. <sighs> you got you got no chill. You got no chill. You got no chill, boy. You got no chill. Um He he missed his human, obviously. Uh let's see. Let's go on to Angelica's question. She says Hi, Nash and Mike. I have an Acer Chromebook. When I turn it on, it flickers on and off rapidly and never come completely up. I've let the battery die to turn it off, but after recharging, the same thing happens again. What the fuck? And is there any way I can save it? Um, that's not looking good. That's not looking good at all. Um, I'm not overly familiar with Chromebooks, but I would know <clears throat> if a laptop was behaving like this. I would say the motherboard was kaflu. That's that's what I was thinking too. Yeah, the, the because rap if it's not if it's not responding to to events like pushing the power button to cycle it off, um, yeah, you might be able to recover your data off the hard drive or flash drive or whatever a Chromebook uses. Yeah, I doubt it though. Uh, that that's the problem with with these. Well, that's a big problem with laptops in general, but Chromebooks they're so they're much, even more centralized and everything built onto the motherboard than a typical laptop. What Mike was saying about the power button is the power button on a motherboard is, uh, it, especially in a laptop, it's a central bit on there. It's it's hardwired on, it's, it's an integral part. 
And if the system is not responding to that switch, and you're getting this fat flash, fast flickers, whatever bad things have happened. Yeah, whatever is causing that problem is a component that's hardwired onto that motherboard. I'm willing to bet that it's pretty much it's junk now. Sadly, I'm sorry. There really is no, you could possibly send it in to have it repaired, but I'm willing to bet it's going to cost more to fix it than it would cost to get a new one. I'm I hate giving you giving folks bad news like that, but there are just some, especially with laptops, when so many of the components are integrated into the motherboard, it's all one piece, and it gets cheaper to buy a new one than it does to fix it, which is ridiculous. But that's just how laptops are these days. Sorry, is bad news. I'm sorry. Um, let's see. Oh God, this one. Uh, uh, which one, John's? There's actually possibly an easy answer to this. Hmm. Okay, so the question. Uh, when they go into their task manager, I guess I'm guessing there's a little bit of line. Yeah, I, th I think I think I missed a part of it. Let me find John's question here so I can I can read the whole thing to everybody because you know we're we're answering a question and nobody else knows what we're answering yet. Let me get the rest of it. Um, here it is. Okay, I have a weird problem. Whenever my computer boots up to desktop after a shutdown, none of my desktop icons will load. My taskbar is empty, everything runs slowly, and programs don't load properly. For my run on startup tasks, programs I start up on my own to even uh, background peripherals like my Wacom tablet not initiating properly, it's like it locks itself down for a bit. However, when I go into my task manager at this point, I see five to six instant programs I don't recognize. They're all called postgres.exe. And in the process tree of just one of them, snaps them all back my computer, then snaps, snaps back into action and works as it should. I've scanned for viruses and malware with no uh, results correlating to my issue, and Google says it's harmless but an unnecessary process. Um, I've gone to uninstall what seems to be the root of it, Postgres S SQL. But in doing so, I found that it claims to be taking up an alarming 121 gigabytes of space. And another Google issue uh, of this issue suggests I, it only gets rid of 500 meg megabytes of space. There's apparently an actual database left over. Um, as you can probably tell, this issue has run circles around me. I hope YouTube can come at this with more fresh eyes and allow more experience to hopefully narrow down and solve this issue. What is it? Why is it here? Can I get rid of it cleanly? Is it needed? And if so, how can I mitigate its effect on my machine? Um, okay, so Postgres SQL is an SQL program, obviously. It's something if you don't remember installing, yeah. was probably installed by something else you installed and said, hey, I need this to run. Mike? Yeah? Where, tell people what SQL is because they probably don't know. Uh, structured query language. It is a, basically a database software. Right. Okay. So a yeah. lot, of, lot of the internet runs on, uh, it's pronounced SQL, even though it's not spelled that way. Um, a lot of the internet runs on SQL. You hear a lot about SQL databases and whatnot. It's 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 kind of thing that's used quite a bit. But the very fact that you, uh, John, that you don't know what SQL is means it probably should never have been put on the machine at all. Now, as I, where I was going, though, was sometimes there are programs that put a SQL database on your computer as part of what they do. Mm. And uh, Postgres is very common in this regard because it's it's either cheap or free i forget which but it's it's very inexpensive for developers to use and basically you know it's pro what it probably was was a bunch of little tables that was used for something and maybe when you uninstalled that something it didn't un uninstall postgres can you get rid of it well yeah there are multiple ways uh first thing i would do is uh click on your your, your start button your Windows Start button, go to All Programs, and look in the Startup folder, and see if there's anything in there that says Postgres. There probably isn't, but that's where we're going to look first. The second place, because that, 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 that's where some startup stuff goes. You know, mm -hmm. just oh, I need to start up my yeah. mouse software, my keyboard software that makes my keyboard flash pretty lights, things like that. Go in there. You don't. Did he say what version of Windows he was using? No. Okay. So. 
if you are using Windows 7 or maybe Windows 8, I don't remember if this window, if Windows 8 has or not, uh, Windows 7 certainly does. Hit your Start button again, and in the Run field, type in msconfig. M-S-C-O-N-F-I-G. All one word. Place, yes, this is a place to be very careful because you can screw stuff up here. What you're looking for here is a tab that says Startup. Again, this is stuff that Windows says I need I need to run at startup. Other programs can tell Windows, hey, I need to run at startup. Mm -hmm. Again, look here for Postgres stuff. If you see it, there'll be checkboxes by everything that starts up. There'll be some stuff that might be there and doesn't have checkboxes. Don't worry about those. They're just still there. Um, if you see Postgres stuff there, uncheck it. Yeah. When you reboot, it won't launch automatically. Um. Those are the big, now in Windows 10, if you're on that, I don't think MS config is there anymore. What you do then is you fire up your, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, your task manager, which is control shift escape. And there's a startup tab on there. Mm -hmm. And you can see if Postgres is running there. And if it is, you right click on it and say disable. So that's what I would check there. Um, if it's taking up 125 gig of your hard drive, well, we don't know, um, because databases sometimes put their file, their actual database files in strange places you wouldn't expect. Uh, and sometimes they put them in multiple places because of Train. how, yeah. Okay. So I'm just told MS config still works in 10. I don't, I don't, I use the control shift escape to get through. So that's the same thing. Um, so, uh, one, uh, actually, database put their files in many places. For example, Oracle, which I have much more experience with, puts the database files in one location and puts rollback files, which says, if I screw up, this is stuff I can run to roll transactions back, in another, which I did not know the first time I had to restore a database. <laughs> But yeah, um, I would check those startup locations because that's probably what's going on. As for the space, I don't know enough about Postgres to find out where it would be storing stuff. I'm sure there's some message boards out there you could ask. Brady's about to show the internet his butt. And there we have Catbutt. There we go. Are we done now? We have achieved cat butt. Uh, anyway, yes. Um, pretty much as, as, as much as 121 gigabytes, that is a lot. Hopefully uninstalling it should make that go away considering the way this was set up, but maybe not. Um, is there any way, is, do you know, could you track down um, the standard install Location for Postgres? Ah, I can try. Let's see here. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Where did my tabs go? Let's see here. If I can spell Postgres. SQL. Uh, uh, You're a little upstaging shit tonight. Why are you being all upstagey? Crawling on my okay, desk. Okay, the default uh, PG data location mm -hmm. is going to be C program files slash PostgreSQL slash some version number mm -hmm. slash data. Yeah. Pretty uh, much. Okay, I'm so what he can do is after he uninstalls, delete that folder. If yeah. it's still and there. It, and it, well, if you if, if there's an actual uninstall for Postgre on your machine, you can run it and it should get it. It may prompt you to say, do I want to get rid of the databases as well? Yeah. And if you do, and if that folder's still there, go ahead and delete it. You're yeah, fine. You can, be, you can blow it away. But obviously something go something going on. I don't you don't need this software. You should need this software. Yeah. And it may be, maybe you took a class at some point where the professor handed out something that installed 
and it put that on there. And when you uninstalled, it didn't grab PostScreen. But yeah, you should just just be able to at least turn at least uh, shut it down and start up. I don't know why it's interacting with Windows the way it is, but uh, well, it, 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 if it's taking a lot of of disk and processor time, then what's happening is it's got some higher priority than the operating system to refresh the desktop. Yeah. So let, what, like Mike said, go into MS config, go to that startup tab in there and disable it. Disable any instances of it starting up. And hopefully you should be able to get to your desktop again and then 121 gigabytes for a program you don't even know what it's doing. No, nah, get that off your system. Get that the fuck off there. There's, there's no reason to keep that. I, I sincerely, because if you don't know what what it could possibly be connected to, it's a good bet you're not using it. Yeah, um, and then and then though, as a, as a final thing, if you then go to run a program that you haven't run in a while, it goes, I hey, I can't find my data. Well, then you know what it was. <laughs> but so, all right, well. That is going to do it for us tonight. Yeah, I think we're about out of time. That's going to do it for us tonight. Okay. Um, we'll be back in two weeks. Should be back on a Saturday again in two weeks. Uh, if you have tech questions for myself and Mike, go ahead and send those to us. We will attempt to answer those for you. That's at requests at radiodeadair.com. In the meanwhile, uh, we'll be back in two weeks. So, good night, everybody.